Happy Veterans Day to all our friends, subscribers, and viewers. We're so happy you joined us today. If you have ever served or are currently serving in the U.S. military, Dana and I both send a heartfelt thank you to all of you. On behalf of our country, I say the same on everyone else's behalf. We enjoy living in the greatest country in the history of the world, in great part to our military and its countless patriots who put it all on the line. Some gave all, but all gave some. Today, owner Gordon Hawkins, whom we met when we were in Denver this past June for the Mercury Club's annual gathering, will tell the story of his car, his two best friends, and relationships that are stronger than ever all these years later. Unfortunately, when we were in Denver, bad weather and audio problems plagued us, but fear not. I will read Gordon's story as we show you both vintage and current photos. This is one of our best stories yet. Enjoy this special feature and be sure to thank a veteran, police officer, firefighter, or first responder whenever you can, but especially today. Now, let's go for a ride. Gordon Hawkins has always had a passion for restoration. Not only is the 59 Park Lane seen here one of a kind, so is the story behind it. Gordon has always had a love of cars, and he has owned many since the age of 15. He even uses cars to date major events throughout his life. He graduated from college in May 1967 from Pittsburgh State at Pittsburgh, Kansas with a degree in automotive technology, and he was drafted that October. He finished boot camp at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas, and his orders in early 1968 were to attend on-the-job training at Fort Bliss. Being almost 24 years old and having had my own car since I was 15, I wanted the independence of my own vehicle, Gordon said. Two servicemen were preparing to ship out to Vietnam, and they had a 59 Mercury they needed to sell. The Park Lane was the longest car I had ever seen. It featured power seats, power windows, and leather interior, and it had only 42,000 miles on the odometer. I offered him $35. He took my money and gave me the title. Nick and I became partners on White Lightning, as we now called her. We towed it to a special shop on post where you could work on your own vehicle and check out tools. We went to a salvage yard and purchased an engine from a wrecked Edsel. It was a 383 cubic inch engine. For $100 exchange, the guy would deliver it to the shop. We began working on pulling out the old 430 and replacing it with the 383 as time and money allowed. We got it done in about six weeks. In May 1968, we all drew a 72 hour pass and drove White Lightning from El Paso to San Antonio to the Hemisphere, 700 miles one way. Four GIs with the top down in the Texas sun, free from the Army for three whole days. Since this was 1968 and the Vietnam War was very much inevitable, Nick and I had the same Vietnam orders. We were to have 30 days leave and report to San Francisco for deployment around the 1st of August. I did not have the heart to leave White Lightning. I drove it home to Atwood, Kansas in July and put it in a shed for the year that I would be in Vietnam. I transferred the title and tagged the car in Atwood. It cost me $12. I was stationed in Vietnam about 35 miles from Nick. I visited him on one occasion and paid him $100 for his half of the car. I paid him in military pay certificates or MPCs. For 38 years it had been in the shed and had been home to field mice and pack rats. The job looked pretty overwhelming. Then I read some statistics that showed only 1,257 of that series park lanes were ever built. The International Mercury Club owners only had six registered. One of the owners guessed that less than 20 were still in existence. I looked at the odometer which was now at 48,000 original miles. The future was set 
and I began a total and complete rotisserie restoration to include a 430 engine just like it had originally. I spent the next six years of my free time restoring White Lightning to its original condition with help from my son Dell and Jeffrey Sampson. We finished the restoration in early spring 2013. Jeffrey was 21 years old and in 2008 a recent graduate of McPherson College's restoration program in McPherson, Kansas. He had already restored two Model A's from the ground up prior to tackling the bodywork on White Lightning. He repaired some pretty serious rust on the rockers and rear quarter panels, making most of the repair panels by hand. He definitely put his heart and soul into the job. There was very little actual body damage to the body, so very little body filler was used. I did most of the disassembly, reassembly, mechanical, and trim myself. The engine is a completely rebuilt 430 just like the original. The transmission is rebuilt and the car has new brakes, shocks, exhaust, water pump, generator, etc. The new top was installed by AutoWeave in Denver, Colorado, as were the new seat covers. The door and side panels were able to be recleaned and used. We premiered the car at the Rod Run in Atwood, Kansas on May 18, 2013. It was also the reunion of all three Army buddies who had not been cruising in White Lightning since 1968. Larry Shackelford from Kansas City and Bill Nichols from Long Beach, California joined me in cruising Main Street 45 years to the day from our long ago trip to San Antonio. Larry said, there has been a bond among us three men centered around a 1959 Park Lane convertible. Gordon, Bill and myself were total strangers from different areas of the US. This car of classic beauty started something much more than just a joyride. It created a lifelong friendship. Bill had this to say, the Mercury has acted as a catalyst in keeping us connected on the phone, chatting on the internet, and physically bringing us together at the Rod Run in Atwood. That brief experience sparks memories that keep on giving. See, we told you that this is a heartwarming story. What's not to love? It's got all the elements of an amazing tale that shows how cars can and do connect people. Thanks to owner Gordon Hawkins for his time and for sharing his awesome convertible with our YouTube subscribers and friends. What do you guys think of it? Please leave a comment and be sure to like the video and share it with your friends. Also, if you're not a subscriber yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribing is easy and it's free. And it ensures you'll never miss even one of our weekly or special edition videos. Thanks for everyone's support from feature car owners, subscribers, and friends of the channel. We couldn't do it without you.